Hello, everyone. Welcome back. My name is Mandy Mack. And I am Chris Rivers. And we are Poll on the Call podcast. And we are so excited (laughs) to be here today with the amazing Natalia Nightshade. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you so much for coming out to meet with us today, for sharing your story and telling us all about yourself and (laughs) all the wonderful things. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, thank you. And thank you for being willing to inspire everyone. I'm truly excited. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> and first of all, let's talk about this beautiful background that's behind you. <laughs> it's like oh. flowers and is there yeah. snakes too? Snakes, skeletons. It's, yeah. It's, it's so gorgeous. amazing. It's the wallpaper and I'm like at the front desk of my studio right now. So this is the wallpaper at the front desk, which I'm obsessed with. That's so awesome. It's beautiful. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> it was it was an adventure to install, to hang. I've never put up wallpaper before. So that was interesting, but it wasn't too bad. <laughs> <laughs> right. I've never done that before either. Yeah, don't don't wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> no. it, worth it, but like, yeah, interesting. <laughs> well, I guess we should start at, at the very beginning with what brought you to pole dance oh god okay uh like I feel like this question is always one of those like how long do you have answers um for me it was kind of like a multitude of things that brought me to pole dance um first and foremost like I I have a friend who oddly enough we went to high school together in Alabama. Um, and she pulls out in California now. And I saw her posting like poll things on Facebook was always, sorry, always really interested. Um, but she's definitely like more on the tricky end, but it still kind of piqued my interest. And then I went to New York back in the stone age, so many years ago. Now, uh, I went to New York and I saw a like baroque burlesque show it's called company xiv if you ever get a chance it's literally the best thing to this day that i've ever seen um and they had somebody there doing pole and like singing opera all at the same time and like everybody's just it's so opulent and amazing and it was the first time i saw pole as performance art and that that was it for me i was like i have got to do this because like the tricky stuff is cool but it's never really been my passion i've always loved dancing and theater and performing and yeah that was just that was the one i don't think i've ever heard of that do they still give that um performance that show oh yeah yeah they do like multiple shows a year they have now like they had different venues but now they have like their own permanent spot Every single wow. time I go to New York, I see them and cannot recommend them highly enough. Like I cry every time. Like, <laughs> uh, and it's I not like cool. it's sexy. It's not even like an emotional show, but it's just it's overwhelmingly beautiful. It really uh, is. Mm-hmm. Is that the one? I think Donna Carno was in it um, recently. I think. No idea. No, yeah. <laughs> I think she was posting about it because that sounds familiar. Now that I think about it, yeah. I can't even dance. imagine. I can't even imagine dancing to opera. That would be so beautiful. Like yeah, it, and she's like singing and pulling at the same time, and like, and every you know they have it's a theater company, so they have a show that they run for a couple of months, and then a new show that they run for a couple of months. One time I went, and um, it was a man in like this mermaid tail, and he was pulling in the mermaid tail, and it was just stunning yeah oh we, we gotta go we yeah we gotta go that <laughs> <laughs> in new england right yeah yes, we're gonna ask bath. you where where you were located <laughs> okay yeah so you're you're pretty close definitely worth yes. the trip oh i'm cheap yeah okay we might <laughs> mandy remember we have to ask about we have to ask for that name in that link again yes <laughs> <I'll end> it. <laughs> Um, so I guess our next question is, do you have any, I know you, I remember you just said you love dance and the performance art. Do you have any experience prior to pole dancing that you brought into it that you find that helped you? Um, so like, yes and no. 
So I was never like one of those kids, unfortunately, that was like privileged enough to take like dance classes and theater and all of that stuff. We just didn't have the money for that shit. Uh, but so when I turned like, mm, I don't know, 1920 and I could afford it, I started taking adult, ba adult ballet classes. So, and I did that off and on for about seven years. Uh, and I loved it. Like I, I loved it so much, but then I found pole <laughs> and, and ballet, like the technical aspect of it has definitely impacted my movement in pole. But as soon as I found pole, I swear to God, I just like abandoned <laughs> ballet immediately. I think in the seven years now that I've been polling, I think I've gone back and taken maybe two or three ballet classes. So I was like, I can dance and like be a hoe. And like, <laughs> this is heels, I like it. outfits, it's everything that I didn't know I needed. I love it. Have you ever tried to do a piece that um, combines your ballet experience with pole? I haven't. No, I haven't actually. Maybe I should. Like I'll play around every now and then just like casually, but yeah. I've never, I've never done like a piece fusing the two. That Add that is. to the box of things. Yeah. Sexy ballerina <laughs> act. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so um, how long after you started pole dancing did you decide to be a teacher? Um, I think I was polling about three years before I started instructing. I mean, I knew instantly pretty much. So I started pole dancing. This is another like backstory but I started pole dancing immediately was obsessed with it um I think my first week of classes I probably took like five classes I'm a very obsessive person so once I'm in something I'm just like diving deep um and it was great I loved it it was definitely more in like the tricky spectrum and then after I had been pulling for maybe nine months or so I took a trip to New York uh went to body and pole and took a freestyle class with Tracy Kafer who is just a goddess um and I was lucky enough that it happened to be like a heels freestyle class and, and like changed my entire pole life that one single class I was like because prior to that I knew nothing about freestyle had never been introduced to it didn't know it was a thing and yeah, that was just like, immediately, I was like, I have to do this. I have to like, find a way to do this. And so I did, but you know, I wanted to get enough of my own practice in first. So yeah, it was probably about three years. That's awesome. And then did you, um, what, how would you describe your teaching style? A hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, I mean, my teaching style, like I am very much a, I feel like it's kind of how I am as a person where there's just an extreme amount of duality because I really love uh, like really fine tuning details and getting really like nitpicky about technical things. And then there's this other side that when we're not necessarily actively working on the technical, I'm very loosey goosey. And I'm just like, you know, I want you because again, I am a performer at heart. And so for me, like performance always comes from like your soul, from how you're feeling, from who you are. And so I always try to infuse that in my teaching of like, let let yourself, even when you are learning, let yourself take time to like allow your body to interpret things or change things or add a little accent that makes it more of yourself. Because I wish that that was like, I wish I had that freedom when I had first started, because I think it would have propelled me a lot quicker into like gaining that comfort. I absolutely love that you bring that up. Um, I've recently started noticing, it's like what you said, when they get that little freedom to kind of make it theirs, it really changes the game for them. So thank you so much for sharing that. Right, like 
you allowing them to take ownership of their movement and not always like exactly. copying what we do because it's okay to make your own shapes and if you have your <laughs> own flair if you want to like add another little shoulder there that's perfect yeah like that that to me is where the real magic is in movement performing all of that because if everybody is just doing the same things and not adding like any of themselves it's just like why am I here? <laughs> what am I watching? You know, and it's when somebody can really infuse, like, I always tell people I do nothing. <laughs> like <laughs> my dance style is just so like keeping things very, very basic um, and more focusing on like the things that are inherently me. So that's the details. And I always say like dancing for the front row because yeah, like all the crazy shit on the pole is cool, but I am here to like, if I'm on a stage, I want you to be there with me. And that connection and those little things really forces people to like pay attention. Right. I wanted to say too, you like, you're a super electric performer and you know, it's like just with their, your ballet background and like, that's not like, did you learn how to do that? How do you learn how to, um, do such amazing like eye contact and just really like keeping everyone's focus yeah well it's funny because that was not something that I really had from like the get-go um the first time I ever competed actually my feedback was to like make eye contact to actually connect with the audience because for me, like dance has always been like, it's how I emote. So for me, it's always very like internal. So when I got that feedback and it was very much like, all right, bitch, challenge accepted. And <laughs> so I made that my mission to let what I'm feeling project out and really connect with people. Um, so perfect example of like, just because it doesn't come naturally doesn't mean you can't do it and can't like fucking kill. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. <laughs> yeah, that was too funny. Um, <laughs> earlier you mentioned that you, um, and it brings up what I read in your biography, you don't do as much. Not that you don't do as much. Can you explain your philosophy of do less? I guess it's the well, best yeah, I guess. <laughs> It's funny. I always say like doing the least, looking the most. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, um, it just goes back to that, the captivation of doing less. And it really is just uh, so much time spent with yourself and like, examining what is authentic to you in your movement. Like I always say, you know, uh, the pussy touch. Yeah. <laughs> so like a lot of times people will perform and they're like, oh, well, I feel like there was a, a phase a year or two ago where it was like, everybody's got it. Like if you're sexy, you have to touch your pussy. <laughs> But like that, that doesn't come naturally to a lot of people like, can, but people were still doing it. And so it was like very awkward. It was like, <laughs> um, and so it's really like not letting the peer pressure of what's expected of you influence your movement and just spending enough time with yourself in your practice to gain the confidence to be like, I don't really give a shit. Like, this is me, take it or leave it. And you have to accept that not everybody is my audience. Not everybody is your audience. Not everybody is your audience, right? So like for me, people doing crazy, like acrobatic gymnastic things, I appreciate how difficult it is, but it, you know, I'm just like, eh, I could take it or leave it. But for some people, they live for that. I'm just not their audience. It doesn't mean it's bad or wrong or not amazing. And the same thing with me, like, I'm sure there are people that watch me dance and they're just like, listen, bitch, I need to take a nap. <laughs> and that's fine because I'm not for you. But for the people that I'm for, they're sitting there damp in their seats. <laughs> it's so true. I'm glad you bring that up because oftentimes as pullers, especially on social media, we're like, why aren't they watching us? Why aren't they getting those likes? I suffer for this brick. 
Um, and you're right. Sometimes, I mean, we just have our audience. People aren't into that. Um, but I love that it it feels like it offers us a challenge to kind of grow, try further things, not just become like a trip queen, but also experiment with that sexiness. Um, so it's interesting. It's it's a hundred percent true what you said, but I do think we should learn from it. If that makes sense. <laughs> sure. I mean, for me, it really all goes back to the feeling like that, that is the driver of movement for me. Like, you know, what is dance without music? What is music without Bye. feeling? So, and there are people that can trick out that like, you can tell they are in it. They're not just like doing a string of moves. They are feeling what they're doing. And it's very rare, but like that, I love watching people do tricks in that way. But for me, it's just like, if the the captivation aspect of it, it really is about feeling because that's that human aspect that you can't fake. And we all recognize it when it's there and it's real. I love right, it. Right. <laughs> Right. And you can, you can sense too when the dancers are on stage and they're not like fully in it as well. And it's, yeah, like, show yeah. us who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I swear, and I'm sure you've seen it too, where you watch somebody performing and you're like, I can see you counting in your head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. right. Like it's hard too, though, but, but and then sometimes it comes naturally, but sometimes <laughs> Yeah, you just have to practice, like you said, by yourself over and over again. Um, yeah, just figure out your own movement quality. Yeah, and find like instructors, find mentors. That really is my biggest piece of advice if you want to develop yourself as like a dancer, because that's harder to, as odd as it is, like it's pole dance, but it's hard to find people to develop that in the industry. I feel like it's easier to find people that are more on the trick track. So that was weird, <laughs> trick track. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like find people that inspire you as a dancer, if that's your goal and learn from them, like take private lessons, take their classes, get a mentorship. I love that. It's so inspiring. I um, it makes me think of what I've been thinking of lately because I'm a trick queen, a trick core. I love them all. <laughs> um, but lately I've been going through a internal process of wanting to expand with that sexy flow, the low flow that you bring us every day. <laughs> and just, um, so I'm glad that you're sharing this because it really does kind of verify yes chris expand <laughs> try something new um uh, master some new skills yeah and like your your people now are in such a great position because like yes covid was awful but we have so much more accessibility for poll classes now like when i started when a lot of people started right it's like you bitch, you get what you get. <laughs> like you, you have what is available to you in your city and that's it. So like I spent, invested so much money traveling and taking workshops and learning from people that were more in alignment with my style because I couldn't really find that here. And now it's like, we have a plethora of online options and yes, it's not the same as in person, but like you can get so much out of online instruction and like even being able to get private lessons online too is invaluable for sure <laughs> i agree yes right i remember i was like all sad because our studio was closed but then i was like oh my gosh i get to take from whoever i want <laughs> <laughs> too funny and well do you want to i want to keep talking about performances though because you um <laughs> another thing that you wrote in your bio was that you um only were on the, the poll for 90 seconds and I love that because I'm also like I yeah. don't like to do a lot of tricks but I just want to dance um how did you get away with that <laughs> <laughs> um just by being absolutely authentic to what felt good to me and what I wanted to like the story that I wanted to tell 
um, in that moment, because it's funny, like I just, I showed up and I just freestyled that shit because honestly, it was like, I was in the middle of building out the studio. I was doing my first intensive that same weekend. It was batshit crazy. And so I just, I had no concept. I actually, (laughs) so when you submit to Dance Filthy, you have to like give them your concept. Um, And then I showed up the day of and realized that the MC was like reading the concepts off. And I was like, fuck, this is not what I'm doing. (laughs) And so I had to write a new like concept intro right there and give it to her before I went on stage. And I was like, I have no concept. I have no concept. Like my entire concept was just, I wanted to like strip down and have, which I thought of at the very last minute, I wanted to reveal this like rhinestone landing strip because I wanted it to be like a legit nude illusion. So I made like glitter pasties that looked like nipples. I had this nude G string that I like rhinestone a landing strip onto. So I pulled some description out of my ass and I was like, you know, if what I want to do is just this like really just like nasty nude illusion ripping off my fish nuts why do I need to spend time on the pole so I did my thing when it felt like a good time to get off the pole I got off the pole and didn't even touch the spin pole I was like I don't care I literally don't care about this spin pole right now um because for me like I just love getting into the audience and I've never seen anybody ever actually get off stage and get into the audience at Dance Filthy. I was like, the show's called Dance Filthy. Fuck it. I'm going to put it in your face. So that was, I was like, I'd rather get off stage. And like one of the judges, I smacked her in the face with my ass. (laughs) And, but that, that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted it to be more just like filthy. Yeah. I love it so much. <laughs> oh, shit. That sounds like so much fun. Does, does Dance Filthy take male dancers? I don't know much about Dance Filthy. Yeah, they do. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, geez, I, I like really want to try experience. Dance Filthy in the future. It, it's great. Like, it's, I am very, like, not competitive. I'm competitive with myself, but other people, I'm just like, I don't give a shit. Because I, especially because I'm very much like a low flow person and that's not necessarily as valued in the pole industry. So if I'm like getting on a stage in like a competitive way, bitch, I'm expecting to get last. (laughs) (laughs) I'm excited. And I'm fine with that though, because all I'm here to do is put on a show. Like I want to be able to have like a fleshed out concept. I want to be able to just do my thing and like, if I place first, last, somewhere in between, you cannot tell me that I was not filthy. And that's what the show is called. So yeah. it's just it. releasing like the aspect of like, oh, I want to win. I want to win. Yeah. And just being like, I want to be authentic to myself. And I want to put something on stage that I'm proud of. Uh, that definitely sounds like I want to try it. Because my number one comment is always like, Mandy, you have to go on the pole more. Let's see what tricks you can do, Mandy. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, what? Yeah. Yeah, I think the last dance filthy, um, one of the judges told me, like, to put more tricks in my routine. And so I purposely put less <laughs> this year. <laughs> and I placed third, so suck it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I love that. That's so funny. <laughs> but oh it is God. true. I feel like in a lot of competitions, it's always use harder tricks, use more tricks, um, use more low pole transitions, things like that. Yeah, but it's anything. <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> Do you have any other um, amazing performances that you want to share with us? Any spectacular times on stage that were so memorable? 
Uh, like I'm a narcissist, I think. <laughs> so like, I love all my performances. Like I've never, I, I don't think I've ever, there have been times where like I've performed and I'm like, oh, okay. Not my best, but like, I like all my shit. <laughs> <It's> just, <clears throat> I'm not really like, a, oh, beat up on myself or like judge myself kind of person. Um, I'm trying to think. So I really, obviously I loved, I love all my dance filthy performances. I think those were probably all some of my favorites. Um, I did a group number for Bad to the Chrome, like a century ago. Um, and I loved that routine. It was really, really cool. I can't remember what year it was, but I'll send you a link if there's video of it somewhere. But I absolutely love doing group routines. That's probably one of my favorite things as far as performance um, is putting together like big group routines. And hopefully I have more of that in my future when I have more time. Right. Do you want to tell us what's been taking up all of your time right now? <laughs> all about your studio. I would say literally everything. <laughs> like, yeah. So uh, my studio, I just opened it. Oh, two months ago today, actually. Uh, November 17th. Yeah. Opened it. We did pretty much the entire build out ourselves. It is, yeah, the most, like I am... <laughs> I am not a physical labor kind of girl, like what the fuck? So we pretty much built out the entire thing ourselves and it was so much work. It was insane. Like we tore up all of the tile ourselves. We smoothed out the concrete, got this amazing glitter floor. I did, we built a wall, but like all kinds of stuff. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was really, really hard, but so, so gratifying. Glitter floor? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, there's a, a glitter floor in like the entry space, the locker room and the bathroom. That was like, you, that was an event. That was an event. Cause like you have to basically like, a, you have to spray acid on the concrete and then yeah, it wild. And then you have to like paint it, put glitter on when you paint. And the paint dries really fast. So you have to like paint, glitter, paint, glitter. And then, <laughs> yeah, it was wild. And then seal it with, like, it was just too much. But I was like, I'm getting this glitter floor. Yeah. Oh, OMG, you must have learned so it. much. That sounds so fun. Mm -hmm. it was. <laughs> and where, where is the studio located? What's the name of it? It's called Studio Nightshade. It is in Tampa, Florida. Um, we're really close to the university. So USF, I know you don't know where that is, but it's pretty centrally located in Tampa. Excellent. And now, uh, what are the types of classes that happen at the studio? <clears throat> so typical to me, like the studio is more, definitely more dance focused. Like that was one thing when I went into opening the studio, I was like, I'm just very much the type of person that it's like, I don't want to do what everybody else is doing. I have no interest in that. I don't care if it's working for them, making them money. If they're doing it, great. Let them have it. <clears throat> so it's definitely more like trick based here. Um, and I was like, you know, I just, I figured if I needed more in my dance practice, there have got to be other people that also want to focus on like dance skills, performance skills, embodiment, like just actually feeling what they're doing. Um, and so the tricks classes that we do have are specifically designed to incorporate dance at the same time. So you're not showing up to a tricks class and learning like these three tricks and like you have no idea now how to actually use them. So that was something that I wanted to avoid is like, I want people to learn tricks in a way that if they want to do tricks, they can actually use them and not like, well, I know these 15 tricks, but I don't know how the hell to dance into or out of it. Oh my gosh. Right though. Like sometimes you get the tricks and you're like, I have no idea how to transition this at all. Right. And then you go, they're like, <laughs> oh, it's freestyle. Yeah. So you never use it. Exactly. So we do have tricks classes, but they've got that focus. And then, but 
for the most part. It's a lot of dance classes, different styles. We have like a burlesque inspired dance class. We have a nasty stripper style dance class, floor work. Um, I teach a couple of like upper level dance classes um, that really focus on like details and transitions. All dance, some tricks. Yes. But... <laughs> <laughs> I definitely want to take one of your classes. Do you offer them online or are they just in person? I So, yeah, okay. So... <laughs> I do. So prior to the studio, I was teaching virtually quite a bit. And then I had to take a break, obviously, to open the studio. And so I'm just now coming back to the virtual space. And I do have a couple classes that I'm teaching this month. And I'm like, mentally trying to figure out how I can marry these things better. Um, because I would love to be able to have like a virtual version of our regular classes. But I also don't want to fall into like what I've kind of experienced before when I've taken virtual classes or heard people taking virtual classes in a studio setting is that it's kind of like you're like peeping in on the class, but you don't really feel like a part of it. Um, and that's something that's always really important for me when I teach virtually is making it feel like we're in person and I'm not just talking at you. Uh, so I'm trying to do the mental gymnastics of how I can make that a thing and make the classes still feel like you're a part of it versus just dropping in and like watching everybody do their thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Sometimes it is like that. And the teacher doesn't interact with you at all. They're just like, okay, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good luck to you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love yeah. that you bring that up because it is true. Um, and we teach online and it is hard to find that balance. I did take an online class with Renan Liao from Portugal, and he didn't have any in-person students. It was only online. Yeah. And he was, he like scrolled through all of us. That was pretty neat. I thought that was cool. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, that's what I'm doing for my virtual classes now, where they will be like yeah. all the studio teaching them. Um, and there won't be anybody else there. But I'm like, can I? fuse the two somehow without like giving these people half of me and these people half of me yeah do you yeah, like yeah. the way you do you like the way you do it now with just um you're only focusing on the virtual do you do you find it makes it easier so i haven't tried to do in person and virtual at the same time yet okay. yeah so like because i just <laughs> you know i don't want to give anybody <laughs> a half-assed version of myself so I, I think one day I'm going to have to try it. I need like a guinea pig class. That's what I need. I need to create a guinea pig class and be like, listen, this might I suck. Don't come for me. You're my guinea pig. <laughs> you like, if I've ignored you, just shout out. Yeah. <laughs> It'll come over. Yeah. And like sound can be <laughs> weird having like talking yeah. here and then to the students. So yeah. Yeah. Well, how how we have it in our studio because we have them running simultaneous simul oh my god I can't <laughs> simultaneously but they mm -hmm. have um I mean we just have to remember to go back and forth but they're like another student in there but if there's a lot like it is hard to keep track of them but we have yeah. them coming through the speakers so everyone can hear them <laughs> yeah yeah how how is it talking to them are you like mic'd up yeah we use our microphone so it's pretty decent for the sound and everything um but the only thing that really is is annoying is every so often the internet will be terrible, and then yeah. and then the the students in studio are waiting for you to like figure it out. <laughs> yeah, and Sorry. for dance classes, sharing the music can sometimes yeah. lag. Yeah, but we make it work. <laughs> yeah, it's always a learning process for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think it's fun too to take it along with the class too. So if you if you have those, I would love to like take that along. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna put you on the list of guinea pigs. <laughs> yes, I would love to. Yes. That sounds fun. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let me see. Well, 
we are you able to give us a tour of your studio right now with it, like words and walking around or oh my shit is not mobile right now oh, okay <laughs> but um i will send you a link to uh like a studio tour video i actually probably oh, nice. on youtube yeah. um, and i'll send you the link because i have like a nice studio tour yeah but be great. I, yeah. I think i would that would be, be a lot of wires and struggle yeah <laughs> right it is hard right, <laughs> right some of the the studio owners we've been interviewing have all this set up and they've got like microphones and they're like walking around with it <laughs> yeah yeah it, <laughs> that, it's hard stuff. to figure I'll out send i'll send you a video <laughs> yeah. so awesome but how many um what do you have two studio spaces or one studio space how yeah. does it yeah, one, yep, one room studio space, seven poles. Um, I yeah. don't, I don't think like I have any interest in bigger. Like I've just, I've had experiences where going from a space that felt more intimate and then taking it into a much bigger space completely changed the vibe of the classes um, and just how people interacted. And so being able to witness that myself as a student really helped me be very clear on like, no, I want it to be like a more intimate setting. The studio is roomy, but I don't want it so spread out where people stop like cheering for each other because you have to literally scream <laughs> like across the room so yeah I want to keep it small and intimate that's kind of my vibe I love that I I agree with that yeah if it's too many people you're like I mean what's going on and then you don't say anything and then you maybe don't get the best class from it yeah, yeah. and what kind of pulse do you have uh loop it oh so now I'm going to ask you more questions because we're <laughs> getting the loop and pull. <laughs> the, the quick lock, did it, how do you like them? Oh, I I've never tried them. I love them. Yeah. I like, so I've had all of the polls. I have an X poll, I have a platinum stages, and I have a loop it. And I had never tried loop it before. Um <clears throat> this is probably but I just, I'm not a huge x pole fan. Uh, I know x pole owns Platinum Stages. Um, and now they didn't used to, but I have always preferred my Platinum Stages over x pole Like, I don't know, y'all. I don't, I don't get it. I know they're huge and great and people love them. That's great for them. It's just never done it for me. Um, and so... I basically just like crowdsourced information, asked a bunch of people, like, what do you use? And one thing that was really important for me and my space is I wanted to be able to remove the polls because I want to be able to like host events and et cetera, and not have all the polls up. Or if I want to bring in another apparatus, since it's only one room, I want to be able to remove the polls. And I just do the, the X poll removable polls have always felt a little sketchy to me. Um, even with the like ball mount, it's just mm, mm, not for me. And so the loop it poles, I asked around, people seem to really love them. So I was just like, you know what, fuck it. We're gonna go with the loop it poles. If I live to regret it, I guess I will live to regret it. <laughs> and I got the poles cause I had only been on loop it's maybe twice. Um, I got them and instantly completely fell in love with them. Like I took them out of the package and my husband, who's not a polar, um, he was helping me unpackage them. And he was like, I know nothing about poles, but just looking and he's installed all my other ones too. It's like, just looking at how, like the quality of the machining of how they make the pole. He was like, these are nice, really, really nice. Yeah. So we installed them and like, bitch, the installation blew. I swear to God, I'm not like a loop evangelist. I, but the installation blew my mind because I have always like 
pain in the ass installing the platinum stages, even though I love that pole, installing the um, X pole. These poles, like, it probably took us like five minutes per pole to install them. It was fucking nuts. Yeah, we uh, screwed the mount in and and I don't know what kind of magic juju they have done with the poles, but you slide the top of the pole into like the hole, shut up, um, put it in place. Y'all that's it. That's it. And my husband installed the first one and he's like, okay, it's in. And I was like, I'm not getting on that. That's not in. It can't be, that's not possible. And he's like, no, I think, I think this is it. Like, I think it's in. Um, and I got on it and I was like, holy shit. Like, how is it? I don't know what they did. I don't know how it works. It's amazing. I'm going to stop talking about it now, but they're amazing. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad I asked you because again, I was going to, I've only been on them at like a few years ago and like, I was going to buy them for our new space that we're opening. And I was going to just be like, I hope they're okay. <laughs> but thank you. They're great. Thanks, and sorry. they're like, the thing that I really like about them as far as stability is the base um, is nice and wide, but it's really flat. So it doesn't really impede your movement. Um, and the entire base bottom is rubberized versus like the x pole where, you know, it just has like the ring of silicone around it. So they're a lot more stable. Um, and the quick lock too, so good. Like I've been on... Um, and again, like no shade to X pole, people love it, which is not my thing. Um, but with the loop it pole and their quick lock system, so X pole has the one where you like lift, twist, and drop it down. And I have known people who have like accidentally switched the setting either in class or like in a performance. So that feels a little, but so the loop it's they actually have like you can't really, I don't know how you would accidentally change it because there's two bus button buttons that you have to push and then rotate um, that will lock and unlock it. And also it has a rhinestone that tells you exactly what the setting is, which is adorable. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, okay, these this was the right choice. So highly recommend. Yes, thank you so much for sharing that, right? It's, so, it's such a hard decision trying to find poles for your studio and like, the space yeah. and having them fit it's one of the biggest investments yeah well i'm gonna get those loop it poles oh, I'm so excited. Excited today. <laughs> with the rhinestone i mean that that really i know out. right it was so cute like it has a little rhinestone it shows you if it's on spin or if it's on static <laughs> attention to detail that that right. will really like truly will sell me on anything because if people pay that much attention to the tiny details you know the rest of it is not fucked up yeah yeah right that's so true <laughs> um let's talk a little bit more about you as a pole dancer if you don't mind sharing your favorite trick <laughs> if you have a favorite trick okay, yeah so i'm very weird like so i enjoy trading tricks sometimes I just don't enjoy performing them right because it's just mm. but I do like doing tricks sometimes and my favorite tricks are weird because they wouldn't be what you think they are but um I love Superman um I know right everybody's like what the fuck <laughs> Superman um shoulder mounts I don't know if you really consider a shoulder mount a trick or a transition but uh shoulder mounts and um, oh my God, what's the other? Oh, iguana. I fucking love iguana. Yeah, right. And that's also like you, what? I think everybody's so confused when I've answered that question. And I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. When I do tricks, people are always shook. Like if I'm in a tricks class and they're doing tricks and I'm doing something, they're just like, wait a minute, you can do that? And I'm like, yeah, you stupid bitch. Just because I don't show you it doesn't mean I can't. <laughs> like. <laughs> I love it. I'm fine. <laughs> you gotta save the old razzle dazzle sometimes and surprise them. Like, yeah, I can I can actually thanks. Yeah. And all <laughs> those tricks you mentioned, Superman, the other mouth, and the iguana, they are nice transitions into a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. That's probably why I like them because you can like you can hang out in them 
Yeah. You know, versus in there, at least to me, when you're in them, they feel pretty comfy. So you kind of get, get, have a minute to actually do some things and move through them instead of just being like, fuck, I got to get down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the, Superman is one of those for me. I can't stand it. <laughs> really? Things in it, but I'm just like, oh no, this is enough. <laughs> French <laughs> press. <laughs> when, I, when I first learned Superman, I was like, this is rude. Like there is, yeah. it used to make me like, you know how sometimes like something hurts and it just makes you rage. Like it hurts so bad. It just like lights this fire in your belly. That's what Superman used to do to me. I used to be like this motherfucker, but then you do it enough and I'm just like, oh, okay, this isn't bad. Man, I need to just do it. Same with iguana. I can't get it. I'm just so scared. Everything's happening behind me. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> are you Are you trying to get into it from up high or like from low and lifting into it? Yeah, I can't seem to lift my legs up into it. So I've been trying to descend. Yeah. Yeah. The, the descend, honestly, for me, feels safer. Like I've done it lifting up from the ground. And I was just like, yeah, this feels way more sketchy than actually descending into it for some reason. Like I don't, I value like my face and my teeth. Like I don't, if I feel like I might smash my face into the ground, I'm just like, I'm out. But because with iguana, like you can descend into it really slowly. Mm. You can also bail because you can be like, yep, fuck it. That's not going to happen and pull yourself back <laughs> up. <laughs> oh my gosh. I cannot pull myself back up yet. Just I would just smash my face. Yeah. You're like, yeah, no, I got it. The first time I did iguana, like on spin though, no. I learned real fast. I learned that lesson real fast upside down in the air. And I was just like, I have made a mistake. And it was just, I swear to God, just a prayer to Jesus that I was able to lift and get back up out of it. So I was like, I have no other choice right now. I actually ate shit with an iguana the other day. So I definitely understand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm definitely okay. I was just practicing the iguana to the bow and arrow archer. <laughs> Oh, yeah, but it was fun. <laughs> yeah, I, it was fun. But it was fun. Ate it, but it was. I mean, hey, sometimes <laughs> still okay. <laughs> it was funny. Um, you know, do you have a pole nemesis? Oh, sorry. No, you said it. Pole nemesis. Um, this is gonna again, like I. I'm too obsessed with myself to give a shit about anybody else. <laughs> like that's just, no, like, no. Um, with tricks, a pole nemesis, like, um, I wouldn't call it a nemesis, but one move that I'm just like, yeah, go fuck yourself is uh, Aisha. Like, I remember it's an Aisha is exactly what happened when I ran a 5k for the first time. Like I did the Aisha once and I was just like, great. I hate it. I'm never doing it again. And it was literally the exact same thing. When I like trained to run a 5k, I ran the 5k once and I was just like, this was awful. And then never did it again. <laughs> so that's how I feel about Aisha. Yeah. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> Especially with Aisha, a lot of people, um, I don't know, a lot of us feel we have to get it. That's what yeah, yeah, makes yeah. us, and it's not true. No, yeah, and like I, I totally get that there are like a lot of cool things you can do with it, and if you're into Aisha, great, fuck it up. It's just, and for me, it was like, okay, and that was at the time too, where I was a little more focused on tricks. And so I was like, okay, I just want to like do it. I just want to prove to myself that I can get my body in this stupid ass position. 
And, <laughs> and then I did it and I was just like, yeah, I don't like anything about this and I'm not going to use it. Like I don't particularly, I know Aisha's are very physically hard and impressive, but like, I just don't necessarily like the shape. It's like spatchcocks, right? It's like, yes, it is amazing that you can literally like eat yourself out or whatever. That's an amazing skill, but I don't I'm like done. how they look. <laughs> I don't like how they look. So it's just like, okay, cool. And usually like exiting from spatchcocks too, it's very rare that you see an exit that like is smooth. And I just really like like smoothness and fluidity. So it's just like, yeah, fuck that shit. Too funny. But it, I mean, spatchcocks though, that shit's hard. <laughs> it's too funny. I'm, thank you for the honesty though, because, um, Oftentimes, I feel like a lot of us were like, we have to get this, we have to, and we really don't. Um, we can, like you said, say, I, I got it once, fuck it, I'm never going to use it again. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that is really kind of how I have built my entire like brand, business, whatever you want to call it in poll is because my style of movement like if you come to my class you know that shit's hard like it's hard because it's really like a lot of like fine detail control strength um but it's in more like covert ways like the magic isn't making something really hard look easy so when I dance people think like oh I could do that but and honestly I don't think there's anything wrong with that like I love people seeing my movement and being like oh well shit I can do that like she's been able to like build this career in the industry by not doing shit <laughs> like, <laughs> like it looks like she doesn't do fucking anything and so it makes other people feel like okay there is a place for me in this industry there is value in just wanting to dance and just wanting to focus on like the movement and being like, you know, I don't, I don't have to do tricks. I don't have to train all of these skills that are very hard on the body, you know, are not super sustainable, are very injury prone. Like, so I love people looking at my shit and being like, she ain't doing shit. Cause I'm just like, yes. And you cannot do shit too. <laughs> <laughs> join me <Yeah. laughs> I love it so much it's funny. <laughs> well, I guess we should also start talking about nightshade designs and how that started yeah. and all the shoes and glitter <laughs> yeah gosh I mean so nightshade designs I started that a year and a half after I started pole dancing um, yeah, I know. I started a year and a half after I started pole dancing because I had like this beat up pair of shoes and I was just like, mm, but they were still fine. It was just, they looked like shit. Um, and I was like, you know, I'm going to try to glitter these. And so I did, and I did like this pink and black ombre thing, I think. And the people at the studio I was going to were like, where did you get those? I want those shoes. And, and I was just like, this could be a thing. <laughs> I was working at like my first ever office job, which not for me, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to try being a basic bitch. Um, because I've always had creative careers in the past and creative fields I too am a creative, so I'm not talking shit because I'm the same, but creative fields, like people are usually kind of crazy. <laughs> and so I was like, you know what? I can uh, the crazies I'm done. Uh, I did makeup for a long time. I did interior design for a while. Um, and so I was like, bitch, I am going to get an office job. And I did it. And then I was just like, I have made a mistake. And so I was at this office job, the shoe thing happened. And I was like, you know what, this could be my ticket. This could be my ticket out of this shit. And then also like 
it allowed me to be in an industry that I loved so much. And so literally I had the idea, like did all the shit three months later, it was a legit business. Um, and then six months after that, I was busy enough to quit my full-time job. So yeah, it was amazing. It took off so quickly and like, thank God it did because fuck that job. <laughs> I love that so much. And I also love that you shared your first design was like an ombre. Like that's hard to do. That's yeah. hard. I can't even yeah. one solid color of anything. <laughs> yeah. But, and I think that was the thing for me with starting the business because uh, when I made the shoes, like I didn't know shit about shit. I knew nothing. Um, and then somebody, you know, people were asking about it and somebody had mentioned this other glitter heels company. And I was like, oh, well, they're just doing like solid shoes for like this amount of money. And I was like, bitch. <laughs> And so that was really like, okay, there's a hole in this market that I think I can fill. Um, and nobody was doing like legit customs where you could like put in a request and get what you wanted. Um, I think at the time there was a business in the UK that had shut down, but like nothing here in the States as far as I know. So I was just like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> I love it. And then, so what is your most um, amazing design that's been requested? Okay, so two separate answers. The most popular design are um, the spiked pole bouton boots, the boots with the red um, arch and the spikes. And I think the most amazing design I've ever done is uh, I did a glitter version of uh, Van Gogh's Starry Night. Yeah, and they were incredible. And I knew when I posted it, I was like, watch, everybody's gonna want these heels. And I was like, you could not pay me enough money to remake these heels <laughs> because they're so, they were so labor intensive. And I was like, I don't give a shit, keep your money. I'm not making these for anybody else ever again. Um, so, but they're, they're incredible. I love them. They're probably my favorite pair I've ever made. That's amazing. Right. That there are works of art though. Cause I have several friends who literally just bought pairs of shoes from, from you so they can look at them. Yeah, no, it's so funny. It drives me like it's, I, I love it. It's so flattering, but also it drives me crazy because people get the shoes and they're like, but I can't, they're too pretty. Like I can't wear these. And I'm like, bitch, they're shit. Like where the, I want you to be able to like dance and enjoy them. Um, so that's always funny. It's very flattering, but also I'm just like, just wear the shoes. But then conversely, you have people that buy them to be like their beater pair of shoes. And I'm like, bro, just like get a basic bitch pair of shoes. I mean, if you got it like that financially and you want to like go for it, but uh, that is so confusing to me. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Right, they do, they last a, a long time yeah. too. And like the glitter is not all over the place either, which I was really appreciative about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. I'm like, I there's a whole method. There's a whole method. And I'm like, yes, you will, especially in the beginning, right? You have like a little bit of fallout, but it's pretty minor. And then after the first couple of wears, it'll stop. But like, I, it's funny. I have done so much product testing. Um, and I still do, like, I'm still testing things to try and see what works. And like people started, um, you know, since like the resin craze started, people started like resin coating things. And I was like, huh, I wonder if I can like resin coat shoes, but it, it's not, it's not it. Like it, it dulls the glitter so much. It's like science lesson. If you know anything about light and refraction, like the, all of the little tiny particles in glitter are mirrors. Yeah. So that's what gives you like the sparkle and the flash. And that's, what's like, oh my God, it's sparkly. Like we're goldfish, you know? 
So when you put a resin coat on top of the glitter, it makes it one big mirror instead of like thousands and thousands of tiny mirrors. So you lose the flash. It just becomes one big reflective surface. So like up close, you'll get like some of the glitter, but when you're on a stage under lights, it stops sparkling and it just reflects like a mirror. Yeah. And so I've tested that and I'm just like, I, I can't do it. I'm about the sparkle. <clears throat> like if you're worried about like getting a couple of pieces of glitter on your ass, like my shoes are too fabulous for you. Do something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. How many custom orders do you do uh, a month? So I actually, as of probably four, no, maybe six months ago now, I um, took it down to 10 custom orders a month. So yeah, I, I'll take like orders off of the website, but as far as like custom order requests, I just do 10 a month and I only open them up for the first week of the month because it's just doing custom orders is much more labor intensive because there's a lot or like time intensive. There's a lot of back and forth with the customer figuring and figuring out exactly what they want. Um, and I'm just like, bitch, I don't have time for all that. Like, <laughs> so it's like, if you miss the boat this month, show up next month and put in your order request. But yeah, I could not do like, I was getting them, you know, every single day. And it's just like living in my emails. And even with a virtual assistant, I was just like, I can't do it. Right. That's a lot. I was so thankful to have made it to your ordering window when I ordered my, <laughs> I was like, gotta get him in. Yes. And you submitted that order and you're like, this is what I want this is my size. This is my heel height. I'm like, God bless you because the, it was ready. the people of the internet do not read. They don't read. <laughs> and I'm like, there is a whole, I made it easy for you. There's a whole form right here that says design, color, shoe size, heel height, and still love you guys so much. But these motherfuckers <laughs> will like not She's like, Oh, I want, I want this. This is my shoe size that is half of the information that I need. <laughs> yeah. And so honestly, like at this point, the, the, like there's so many custom order requests that if you don't give me all of the information, I just won't respond. And it says that on the website too. Like if you leave off pertinent information, try again, I can't do it. Right. I, I remember seeing that. I was like, I don't want to get this wrong because I need these yeah. shoes like for this event. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's like there's already enough back and forth like we don't need to be like four messages in and be like sweetie I still need your shoe size yeah yeah no it was really perfect and smooth and I loved I love my shoes <laughs> the pictures you, yeah the pictures and video look so good it was like oh the thank you outfit, yeah yes <laughs> and you also sell shoes um that you've already made pre-made right on your website and uh, some other products as well. Do you want to talk about those? Yeah. Yeah. So I do occasionally like if, which God knows when that will happen again, but there was a time in my life <laughs> where when I had more free time, I would just be like, you know, I want to make this, this, and this, or like there are some shoes that are one of a kinds where they'll just be like wild spray painted, um, because for me, it's just with making shoes, a lot of times it's like, okay, bitch, we've, it's so many and we've done it so many times. So I'm like, I need to make something completely different. So like, I think the first one of a kind pair I made had, um, vulvas all over them. <laughs> and that's actually probably Oh, if the Starry Night ones aren't my favorite, maybe those are my favorite. They were like this pink, they were the pink like patent and all down like the entire shoe. Um, I painted like all different like colors and sizes and shapes of, and they were, loved them. Yeah. So I'm sorry. I started talking about vaginas and I forgot the question. <laughs> oh, my other oh, problem. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Available on your website. But yeah, so I do. I have uh, other products. I make um, like shirts, tank tops, hoodies, 
all that stuff too. Um, usually with those, I will release them two, three, maybe four times a year. Um, and so I always say like, if you see it and you want it, get it because they usually sell out pretty fast. And th- because I am just like a chaotic loosey goosey, like air sign, even if it sells well, I can't promise I'm going to bring it back because sometimes I just get bored of looking at something and I'm just like, I don't care if you want it. I don't want to do it anymore. So, <laughs> so it's like, get it while you can, because it might not come back or it might be a while before you see it again. Note to everyone. Bye now. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll put the link to, to all of that in, in the comments and everything. <laughs> I, I, it's so inspiring listening to your story because um, you found a way to make a living off of multiple yeah. financial sources, which has always been my goal. So it's beautiful to see. And thank you for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I mean, I just, I, I, I've always been such a creative and so doing one thing was just never going to be enough for me. Um, and so even now with the, I'm a crackhead, I think maybe, I don't know, like even with the studio now, I'm like, I have studio merch, I have shoes here and I'm still like, okay, when can I go and like travel and perform again and teach workshops and host intensives? Like I just, I, there's something wrong with me, <laughs> but I enjoy it. I think I'm just, I love what I do so much. Um, and I'm very much one of those people that sees opportunity everywhere, like opportunity and inspiration. I literally find everywhere and I'm super obsessive. So once I get an idea for something, I can't not do it or else it will just repeat in my brain until I die. So yeah, I'm a complete slave to like my creative whims for sure. I love that you share that because I'm the same way. And I find that I've had to, how do you say, scale it back or tone it down? Because when I am pulled in so many ways, I start to slack. How, how would you advise help with that for any of us who are the same way? Yeah, so I like... I do a lot, but Jesus, God, relax. Okay. So um, (laughs) I do a lot, but I'm very, I'm very aware of how much time things take, where I can like do certain things. I keep no information in my brain. Like if you ask me any, like if you asked me my schedule this week, the studio has been open for two months. I still don't know what my schedule is. Um, It's all like on a note somewhere. I have a calendar um, at home where like, okay, this month is this, this month is this, this month is this. And so that's kind of how I structure my things. Um, And also just rest like bitch rest like that's very important because yeah once you start like burning out it sucks and like I I have been there when I first started um the shoe business like I think it was two about two years before I hired my first assistant and for a solid year I was working 16 to 18 hour days, seven days a week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and again, this is like a solid year. I would wake up at like, you know, five in the morning, immediately go into my office and start working. And then I would finish at like 11 midnight, go to bed, do the same thing the next day. Yeah. It was, it was wild. Um, And so there was a point where I was like packing boxes to ship and I put the box down and I was just staring at it. And I was so burned out that I could not remember how to pack a box. Yeah. And I was like, I could not remember like the order, bubble wrap tissue, all of that. And so I was like, okay, this is my sign. And I went and I went to sleep. And then I posted a job post on Indeed and I was like, bitch, somebody come help me because I, this is not sustainable. 
So yeah, I think it's just, um, especially if you're into doing a lot of things, I pour all of myself into something and then I move on to the next thing. And I pour all of myself into that. And then I move on to the next thing. And like, so there's a lot of balls in the air, but I'm not really splitting my attention too much. Um, because otherwise it's just like, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm like fucking everything up. <laughs> I need to be able to give everything like a hundred percent and then put it on a shelf and be like, okay, that's done moving on. So it's makes a, so much sense. Yeah. Definitely juggling. But, um, if you can kind of compartmentalize and try not to split yourself, I think that will probably help more. Plus it also keeps like the passion alive. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like I never thought about like, but you're right. Like eventually you need an assistant <laughs> to like help you like take care of all the things. It's oh, a yeah. lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have, you have a virtual assistant, correct? Yes. Yeah. I have an assistant that works with me, um, in my I home Then I have a virtual assistant. Yeah. And so yeah. you get both. That's so lucky. Yeah. I initially, my in-person assistant, I thought about having her do virtual also, but she's very much like me where she's like, I, I can't, I, I can't talk to people all day. Like I just can't do it. And so I think she like tried it for a couple of weeks and she was just like, Hey, yeah, no. <laughs> and I was like, well, fuck because no, me too. <laughs> so then I, uh, I reached out to a friend of mine, um, who's like a, I don't, I don't really know what you would call her. I guess she's like a, an Insta, Instagram influencer, but I don't even know how much she's on Instagram, but I reached out to her and she recommended her virtual assistant to me. Um, and that has also been a lifesaver because that is like, I always joke, and this is awful. I should not say this out loud, but I always joke, like before I brought her on, I was like, Nightshade Designs has no customer service. <laughs> I was like, I'm not doing it. I can't fucking do it. I like, and it's so funny because people would still be like, no, but your customer service is amazing. And it's because, because you're not annoying like, <laughs> because you read and you like did the thing. That's why the customer service was great for you. Cause you didn't make me mad. <laughs> so yeah, hiring her was great because I'm just like, God, yes. Now you can take the emails from people that only give you 35% of the information you need. I love that so much. Like that's, that, that's such good advice to you though, because like if you, it, it takes a lot to be like, okay, I'm not like going to be able to handle this. I need somebody else to like deal with this and then to trust them with that stuff too. Oh yeah. And I mean, it, Oh, I'm sorry. I just muted you. <laughs> that's my cue. I'm out. <laughs> But yeah, it, it definitely takes a while to like get that trust. I'll start like, and same thing with my in-person assistant. Um, you know, you start them on jobs that I like to say are like idiot proof. <laughs> like, it's like, okay, we're going to start with baby steps. Can you do this and do this well? Um, and then you just kind of like keep giving them more and more. And, and so that has been... Yeah, both of them have been a lifesaver. And I think with with my virtual assistant especially, um, it was harder because that, you know, that's your interface with the company. And uh and so I definitely like at the beginning, I think was a little more like micromanagey. And then, but you know, after a while, I'm just like, girl, do it, say what you need to say, whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't involve me do your thing <laughs> you've been around you know what to do yeah right like sometimes it's like oh that's not how I would have done it but that's okay too like, right I'm like, just like, listen yeah. do it <laughs> right well do you have any other business advice for any other whole entrepreneurs getting into um I guess owning a studio or designing for pole dancers as well oh god um 
it's just like so hard to answer the question because it's so broad. Um, I would say follow number one. Okay. Yes. Follow your passion. Like everybody will tell you that. And I am very much a passion driven person. Um, but be prepared to work your ass off. Like work-life balance is very important. And I definitely have shockingly, even with the studio being so new, I have a lot more of that now. Um, but again, right. For the first year and a half, I was working 16 hour days, seven days a week. Um, so just be prepared. And the thing is, my biggest piece of advice for owning a business, owning a business is not for everybody. And there is no shame in that because I think a lot of people see owning a business and they're like, Oh, everybody wants to like be a business owner. Um, and it's the same thing with like leadership. Everybody wants to be a leader. Very few people bitch have leadership skills, like, <laughs> but try it, right? If it's something that you feel really called to do, do it. Um, and if you find that like, okay, this is not for me because owning a business is so great in so many ways, but it is so, like, it's so hard. It will challenge you in ways that you did not even think it could or would challenge you. Um, and so if you try it and you're just like, fuck, that somebody else pay me to do a job. I don't want to be the one that is in charge of all the things that takes the hit when things go wrong, that, you know, all of the like financial investment, it's a lot, but I also like scrub the idea of failure from your brain because I don't really believe that failure is a thing. Like you try something, you learn something and then either you like it and you keep going or you're like, I learned that this sucks and I hate it. And then you move on to something else. But like, that's not a failure. You just learned something about yourself. Oh my gosh, that's the most beautiful advice I've ever heard. Like, that's amazing. Just cause it, you know, I guess you, you only fail if you don't try, I guess, but you're right. Even if you try, you're still going to learn something and you should not think of any of it as a failure. Yeah. Yeah. It's just not, not everything is for everyone and that's okay. Right. But how are you going to know unless you try it? <laughs> exactly. I mean, and that's, that was very much how I felt about opening the studio because I like, I need to love something to do it. Like I just, I've always been that type of person, even as a child, it's just like, if I'm not into it, I'm not doing it. And you can't get me to, <laughs> my parents will vouch for that. Um, and so owning a studio is not something that I ever, ever thought I would be interested in because I've had so many conversations with people that own studios and they're just like, girl, I don't know. And I love dance so much that I was like, I don't want that love to die because I've opened a studio. And that's really like the feedback that I got a lot that it, it becomes completely different. Um, but after like, sitting on it for a long time I was like you know I'm such a creative person I want to have a whole creative space um and if I hate it bitch my lease is three years long I will shut this shit down like I <laughs> I am very much like not uh, attached to anything. Like I, I do not practice Buddhism, but that is something that I, that is very aligned with me is not getting attached to people, things, outcomes. Um, and it's very much like 
does this bring me joy? And I will do it for as long as it brings me joy. And I know that that doesn't mean that there won't be struggle. I'm fine with struggle, but it's like at the end of the day, overall, what does this add to my life? Um, And so, yeah, like the studio really is, I love it. It's just a big fat science experiment because it's, yeah, it's how I run it is different. My philosophy on movement is different. My philosophy on supporting my students is different. Um, And so I'm just like, is this going to work? I really do not know. (laughs) But I'm, I'm, you know, I'm here for the ride. I love that so much. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Yeah. And thank, thank God thus far, like I'm enjoying it so much more than I ever even expected I would. Um, yeah. So that's a nice surprise. Hopefully it stays that way because if it doesn't three years, we're out. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Right. So I was going to ask you, what are your plans for the future then? I don't know. No. Yeah. You know, I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I don't have plans. I don't really make plans. (laughs) Like I just like, it's crazy, but I just, I'm not a super planner because again, for me, it's just like, how does this make me feel? And I've always been that way. I can't, I'm very bad with committing to things. Um, because I'm just like, yeah, and I, I love it now in three years. I don't know. So my plan is if I love it, great. We're going to stick around. If I don't, I'm going to hop on and move on to something else. Um, because I really want to create a space for people to explore dance in a way that I love and see if it resonates with them. But everything I do, number one is for me. I think that is amazing advice as well for anyone. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I, I really think that's a beautiful way to go too, because you're just um, open to the opportunities rather than like being like almost forcing things to happen all of the time, like many of us do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm not forcing shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I think um I think Chris, that was all the, the questions that I had to ask. Do you have any additional questions? <laughs> I was looking at the question. I've been kicked out of this meeting twice. I noticed, I yeah. <laughs> but you're back. It's okay. <laughs> um, I am sorry about that. I don't know what's going on. It's okay. Um, and- do we already ask for any advice for future pole dancers or studio owners? Yes. Yeah. I think that's it for what I'm getting from the questions here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that was all of all of the questions. Yeah. Do you, Natalia, right. did you want to share anything else with us? Um, any upcoming things that are awesome? Oh my gosh, I feel like I always have upcoming things. Um, so I have this is like my my shit right now is I hosted my first intensive um last year, again, right before the studio opened, and it was the best thing I've ever done. Like when I did the intensive, I was just like this is like, this is why, like, this is the reason for all of this, all of the years of work. And like, this is the thing. Um, and I was so glad that I think everybody there really felt that. Um, and they got so much, I mean, I know they did and they got so much out of it too. Like it it was just the best thing I've ever done. So I have another intensive coming up in uh, February. So about a month from now, um, which is sold out. I have an intensive coming up in June. It's either June or July. Again, I don't have thoughts in my head. Um, <laughs> with Dalton and Tia, I'm ugh, 
so excited about that. I just love them both so much, both as movers and human beings. So I cannot wait for like all of the learning and fuckery that's going to happen um, that weekend. I think I have one spot left in that intensive. And then I'm trying to do that like three times a year. Um, just so it's like not too much because they are a lot of work because I like to make them a thing. It's not just like show up and take some classes. Like there's, you know, we have dinner, we do photos, we like have a pool day. Um, and we all stay like, not all, but if you choose to stay, like we stay together in a big house, um, because there's just so much more connection to be had that way versus like showing up, staying separately, um so yeah November I haven't announced who it's gonna be yet but I'm so excited I'm so fucking excited for that one I'm excited for all of them but that it's gonna be a good one that sounds like so much fun do you have do you have them in different locations or are they all in the same they're all here in Tampa yeah they're all here in Tampa um the first one was hosted at the studio I used to teach at because the the studio wasn't ready yet. Um, So thankfully I could have it there, but yeah, they'll all be here at my studio now, which also is amazing. Like 100% sure I'm going to cry in February (laughs) when I have the intensive here because I'm just going to feel all of the feels. Um, Yeah. So they'll, they'll all be here. Like it's enough coordinating here locally. And I have the studio that I can use. So I'm like, why would I put so much more on my plate of trying to coordinate something somewhere else? Um, That's too much. Like if I'm going to go out of town with like poll or with people, either somebody else is paying me to do it and coordinating the things I ain't doing it. Or like, I would rather just take a vacation with people. Cause I'm not trying to, I love traveling. And so I'm not trying to like make travel more work than it needs to be. I love these intensives. I, <laughs> I want to go to the June one, but there's only one spot left. I don't know if I'll be able to get that. One. <laughs> <Do it>. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. There's well, thank you so much. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I could do the no- November one. Yeah. I'll take a, a time off from PSO to do it. Oh my God. Especially <laughs> if you're, yeah, if you're into like low, flowy things. Right. I mean, how sexy are like, because like there's low flow and then there's like ho shit. So it depends yeah. on like comfort level. But literally the theme for November. So it's uh the first one was magnetic movement so we're bringing that back it's going to be magnetic movement but the like theme is slut you out (laughs) that's all i could tell you about november but that's yeah that's where we're going for november and i am so excited (laughs) yeah i'm writing that down right now (laughs) i'm signed up i'm done (laughs) yeah oh my gosh Natalia, this was so much fun. And thank you so much for, for sharing everything. And I wanted to congratulate you on all your success. You're just so amazing and so inspiring. And, and I know so that your story is going to help a lot of people too. Yeah, this is a blast. <laughs> uh, here. I truly humbly apologize. I had internet service. I am now on my phone. Um, but this was oh, fun. <laughs> it was so fun. No biggie. It's literally, I think, the last day of Mercury retrograde. So that's probably. Oh, thank goodness! Yeah, <laughs> Finally, tomorrow. That's probably your the source of your technology issue, <laughs> right? It's like the grand finale. Uh huh. Yeah. It's just like here we go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I guess we should do our our sign out. <laughs> yes, thank I you so can. much, Natalia. I'm inspired. <laughs> Well, my name is Mandy. Oh, sorry, sorry. Chris, you keep coming in and out and I don't hear you until I'm like talking. It's me. I'm cursed. It's not retrograde. It's literally me. I swear to God. Oh, you're perfect. All right, well, 
My name is Mandy Mack. And I'm Chris. <laughs> and we're here with the amazing Italian nightshade, and we are signing out and wearing my nightshade designs. Me too. <laughs>